All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are gonna look at the in-ground fig trees here behind me. This is my southern plot here in the Philadelphia area. And I wanna show you guys some of the results from uncovering them this spring. Uh, but we're also gonna talk about probably the most important springtime task that I do for my fig trees. And it starts right now and it lasts all year. And it is probably the most important thing I do to them all year, which is actually staking. You might notice here, there's a lot of fig trees in this plot. There's actually 60 fig trees I have. Uh, they're two foot on center. That's how close I planted them. Uh, and in order to make this really work, you have to kind of imagine that this whole area is one giant fig tree. And in the middle is my garden. Um, and so if I'm gonna have one giant fig tree, I need to make sure that even if I had just had one fig tree or 60, that that tree is getting the right amount of light that it needs to set the fruit buds. This is something we talk so much about, especially in the spring and in the summer, you guys inevitably always ask me down the road, Ross, my fig tree isn't fruiting. Please, what is there something I can do? Well, the one thing, the major thing is about sunlight and it's about maximizing sunlight. It's not about, all right, well, let's take my fig tree and put it into more light or let's plant it into more sunlight. Uh, we need to make sure that we're maximizing the light in the given area that our fig trees are in. If let's say this spot here gets seven hours of light every day, well, that's great, but it doesn't really tell the full story. In fact, I know a lot of you guys out there who have really dense trees in the spring, in the summer, and it just ends up resulting in a fig tree that's so dense that the fruit buds never set and you don't get any fruit. So the best thing to do is instead of pruning it, is actually to stake it, is to open up the center of your tree. So if we can imagine that, uh, like I said, this area here is one giant fig tree, well then I wanna make sure that all of the trees in here are spaced away from each other. So let's say this row of fig trees, I have three rows actually. This row here on my right is gonna be bending or growing this way. Uh, the one in the center has to grow up, and then the one here on the left is already being bent actually outwards to the left towards my garden. And I also put fig trees, by the way, on this, uh, this little thing here, this concrete um, railing that we have, and those are the container fig trees. So I can't really go too much out here to the right. It's, um, this plot doesn't get enough light as it is, and so if I'm going to successfully get all of these fig trees to fruit this year, uh, and I'm gonna get good fruit set, not just a couple fruits here and there, I need to make sure that every single tree is spaced properly. Now, some people might argue, well, Ross, you could just do some pruning. If you're so concerned, why don't you just take out some of the trees, or if you had one tree and your tree was really dense, just do pruning. Well, it, my advice is you don't wanna do that because pruning excessively, especially in the wintertime, when the trees are dormant, results in no fruit set or very little fruit set the following year. Now you can still get a lot of fruit set after a hard pruning, uh, so don't get me wrong, it does depend on the variety, it does depend on the amount of hours of sunlight that you have. But in my experience, uh, and as a general rule of thumb to most growers, to especially you guys out there who might be new at this, you wanna keep your winter pruning to a minimum. That's exactly why we went through all this trouble of protecting all my fig trees here in the ground, there's over a hundred of them and I've protected every single one of them. Even the ones that have survived the winter in the past as an insurance policy, because I wanna make sure that all these buds here on these branches are preserved or get it through the winter time. And my pruning shears, by the way, have the same effect. We talk about how the hormones affect our fig trees. So if we're removing the apical and lateral buds here, that's going to limit my fruit set. It's going to make the trees more difficult to set fruit set. The fruits will ripen later. The, the quality of the fruits will also be lower. And so in general, I don't want to be pruning my fig trees unnecessarily. Additionally, this is the last point I want to make, that if you were to prune your fig trees more, you can make an argument that you will get less fruits. So I would rather, instead of taking out a branch that could potentially have fruit on it, I would rather just bend it in the right position with a stake. If I can preserve 
all these apical and lateral buds, the more buds I have, potentially the more fruit I can have. Now, I know that's a little bit more nuanced. The answer is really a little bit nu more nuanced than that. But in general, that's the truth. If we wanna have, let's say, a larger fig tree with more buds and more leaves and more fruits. But, you know, the only way to maximize a tree that has more leaves and more buds and more fruits is to make sure that the branches are positioned properly. So that's my number one tip for the spring. It's always been my number one tip. It probably always will be. That and pruning are just the game changer for anybody out there who just can't get their fig tree to fruit. You have to learn those two lessons. So as you can see, every fig tree, no matter how old it is, um, no matter what I was able to preserve, I mean, I have some branches here we cut out. We sold them as cuttings last fall. Whatever is left over and I could preserve, especially these apical and lateral buds here, I wanted to do that so that they have a higher chance of fruiting. And you can see now every tree has a stake. Every tree is in its position away from the other trees so that I can guarantee that they're going to get the light that they need to set the fruits. Otherwise, I'm just going to grow leaves. We're trying to grow fruit, not leaves. And you can see this row here is growing specifically into my garden because there is just quite a few trees. And on, on, on all honesty, I don't recommend planting them this close unless you really, really know what you're doing, unless you really wanna put the care in, especially like I do, of staking these trees, training them properly. And again, here's the other row of fig trees that have, I have them growing out towards the garden again, or this bed of strawberries here, the bed of alpine strawberries. Then there's another row in the middle. Then there's a row that's close to the house. Um, and so, yeah. You know, I would not see nearly as much success if I didn't do this to not only my in-ground fig trees, but also the potted ones. And so, again, now that we've uncovered them, we talked about that in the last video, we've taken off our winter protection. The next step in the spring is to get them staked, positioned, so that they can get the right amount of light. And uh, you guys will thank me for it, I promise you. So if you really like this video, please hit me, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and uh, check out my blog, figboss.com. Subscribe to the newsletter there. Thank you guys. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.